In this series of videos, we're going to look at our last technique for integration, a technique called partial fractions. It's worth noting up front that partial fractions is not used only for integration. You also see it in later courses as well. We'll mention that when the time comes. The first step is to realize why we might need another technique of integration. And the easiest way to see that is to look at a relatively simple combination of functions here, a rational function with a linear term on top, quadratic term in the bottom, and just ask ourselves, how would we go about integrating this with the techniques that we already have? Well, one thing we might try would be substitutions. Taking a look at that, the inside type functions, maybe we could try using u equals x squared plus x minus 2. If we did that, then du would be 2x plus 1. Uh, that doesn't cancel with the numerator very nicely. It, it turns out to get us into a whole mess of other things that don't really help. And by parts, because this isn't really a product, we don't really have a UDV form, then that also leads to not too many avenues forward either. So if we can't use substitution or substitution doesn't help, by parts doesn't help, gosh, it'd be handy if we had a third technique. So here we go. The method of partial fractions is used only, and this is important, only for expressions where you have a rational function, some polynomial over a polynomial. Even further, it only works where we have something that's called a proper rational function, and that's where the degree in the numerator is strictly less than the degree in the denominator. For example, this last function here is a proper rational function. And it's proper because the degree in the top is 1, it's a linear term. The degree in the bottom is 2, it's a quadratic. So the degree in the top is strictly smaller than the degree in the denominator. If by chance you were given a rational function to integrate, but it was not a proper one, then you have to first go through the process of making it a rational function. This might feel like an exercise in tedium or a little bit of a flashback to techniques you learned in high school but might not have used since, and that is the division of polynomials. So if we have a rational function here, which has a quadratic on top and linear on the bottom, so this is not a proper rational function, then what do we do? Well, we do some long division and we break off the part that goes smoothly into x minus 5, and we're left with another part that will be proper. This is exactly what you do with regular numbers with long division. You get a remainder. We're going to be doing the same thing with polynomials. Let's go through the process here for the function we are given. We're going to take x squared minus 4x plus 3 and we're going to divide it by the denominator, x minus 5. And the idea is, again, like long division in numbers, we just stack the columns of matching terms, asking ourselves, how many times does x go into x squared? Well, it goes in x times. So we take this x here, we multiply it by all these terms to give ourselves x squared minus 5x, and then we take all of that and subtract it from the expression we started with. That cancels out our x squareds. We have minus 4x plus 5x. That gives us plus 1x when we're done, plus a 3. And then we repeat for the constant term. Well, it turns out we need one more x. So we're going to have that multiplication here again. When we multiply that in, we're going to have x minus 5, x minus 5. We'll subtract that as well. And we get 0, 3 plus 5 is 8. And that is our remainder. When we take this large term in the numerator and divide it by x minus 5, so our x squared minus 4x plus 3 over x minus 5 is exactly equal to what we get when we divide, x plus 1, plus the remainder 8 over x minus 5 as well. And now we get this expression here, which is a proper rational function, plus some stuff that's not even a rational function anymore. It's been simplified completely. So this long division process, again, just helps to simplify what would ordinarily be fairly complicated into a simple term that's not even rational anymore. It's just a nice polynomial, and then a much simpler secondary term to deal with afterwards. Let's see how we can approach that with 
a function like the one here that we're now being asked to actually integrate. Our first note is that this is not a proper rational function because we have a quadratic over a quadratic. It's the same degree. For proper, it has to be a smaller degree on top. And it's important to note we could use long division to simplify this. Or if you're familiar with it, synthetic division, or honestly, any shortcut that you know. Now, for me, in this case here, because the numerator and denominator are so similar, it makes sense to try to match them up. And what I mean by that is if we have x squared plus 1 on the top, but x squared minus 1 minus 1 on the bottom, if this was a minus 1, we could just cancel the two. We could just cancel the numerator and denominator. Of course, we can't unless they are actually the same, but we can make them the same by subtracting 2 from this. Then we'd have x squared minus 1. Of course, we can't just go around willy-nilly subtracting things. We have to also add the matching element. But this is exactly the same expression that we started with. And if we just group it in a way that's convenient for us, we end up with x squared minus 1 here plus 2. And that means we get an integral of 1 plus 2 over x squared minus 1. So this now is a proper rational function here. We have a constant over a quadratic, perfect. And this part here is a nice leading term that is easy to integrate. No fuss, no mess there. Uh, this is still a proper, but uh, this is a proper rational function, but it doesn't seem to help us integrate. How can we take another step? Well, we could try factoring. It's a perfect square, so we can factor it as x minus 1, x plus 1. And that's still hard. However, it would be really nice if we could do this. I'm going to wave a magic wand here and do something over x minus 1 plus something over x plus 1. This would be easy. Well, let me specify the numerator a bit better. I'm going to put a constant a and a constant b here. They're just single numbers. And the reason we like that is this would be easy to integrate. Why? Because this would be ln of x minus 1, ln of x plus 1, away we go, no problem, no fuss, no muss. So if we can do this step reliably, consistently, then we can turn integrals that are currently hard into integrals that are easy, and fortunately, this needing to do this is exactly what we mean by partial fraction decomposition. The technique of partial fractions is what's going to do the separation of a product in the denominator into a sum of separate denominator terms, and it's going to be beautiful. We can rely on some fundamental mathematics here. We won't be proving it, but we can take it as a given that if we have a denominator that's a product of distinct linear factors, like x minus 1 times x plus 1, but it can be even more general than that. We could have 3x plus 5, 7x minus 2, pi x minus 5 thirds, whatever. As long as we take each of those terms and decompose it, the denominator, we will get the same value, we have the same function, if we break them into individual linear terms in the denominator separated by pluses, and then with constants up top that make it work there will always be a set of constants that will make these two sides equal to each other. Our next challenge is simply to find a process that gets us those terms fairly easily, and we're going to see that in the upcoming videos.